In fact, Bani Umayyah had waged two battle fronts against Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. There was the physical battle, the battle that was on the ground that killed Imam al Hussein and crushed the bones of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. And there was another battle, and that was the propaganda war. That was the battle which did not use the swords and the spears, but rather it used the poets and the scholars. It was the battle which used the fatwas from the scholars to bring down the Ahlul Bayt and Imam Al Hussein and everything that they stood for. Imam Al Hussein was not only killed in one battle, they tried to kill Imam Al Hussein through the propaganda, through the use of the poets that would come up and speak against Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. They would use the fake scholars which would issue fatwas against Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. How do you think at least 30,000 went out to Karbala to kill the grandson of the Prophet? Did they just go for that? No. There was a fatwa that was issued against Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam by the judge in Kufa by the name of Shurayh Al Qadi. He took money from Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and he issued a fatwa making the blood of Imam Al Hussein halal. And therefore, they went out to fight the grandson of the Prophet and they thought, some of them thought, that what they were doing was going to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a propaganda and there continues to be a propaganda until today against the Ahlul Bayt, against Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. The physical battle came to an end, but the propaganda war began before Ashura and continues to this day. Bani Umayyah, they started, Muawiyah started the sunnah of cursing Ali ibn Abi Talib, the first Muslim, the first defender of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The speakers would go out and they would curse Ali ibn Abi Talib on the member. In order for Salat al-Jum'ah to count for them, they would have to curse the Ahlul Bayt. When they took the family of Imam al Hussein to the courtyard of Yazid, Yazid ordered a speaker to go up and curse Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Ahlul Bayt. It was something that was very normal for them. This is why when the people of Damascus, they heard that Amir al Mu'mineen in the year 40 after Hijrah, they heard Amir al Mu'mineen was killed. While he was praying, he was in his sujood and they struck him. Some people asked, Ali prays? Ali ibn Abi Talib prays? The propaganda was working for many. And until today, there are many that are fooled by the propaganda of Bani Umayyah and Bani Al-Abbas and the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. So now, what should the Ahlul Bayt do? Imam al Hussein and the Ahlul Bayt, they were killed. And there's a propaganda, there's a media, there's a war machine, propaganda machine that is waged against them. What should they do? The Ahlul Bayt, they had no power, they had no authority. What did they have? They had the love of the people. They have the love in the hearts of the people. And my dear brothers and sisters, it's the love in the hearts of the people that has kept the name and the legacy and the mission and the vision of Imam Al Hussein alive until today. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, you who are listening to the majlis of Imam Al Hussein, you who are carrying out the aza of Imam Al Hussein, you are not only commemorating a man who was killed 1400 years ago, you are re reliving and you're carrying the legacy of Imam Al Hussein. If it's not for you, then the message of Imam Al Hussein would be stopped. The Ahlul Bayt, they relied on the Mu'mineen. They relied on the believers like yourselves to attend the majalis of Imam Al Hussein, to cry for Imam Al Hussein, to shed tears for Imam Al Hussein, to visit the grave of Imam Al Hussein. This is why you should feel that you have been privileged. You should feel honored that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the privilege to be of those amongst those 
who shed tears for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. From those who on the day of judgment will stand in front of Rasulullah and you will tell Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, we were of those Muslims who cried for your grandson. And there were many others that took the day of Ashura as a day of Eid. There were many others that took the day of Ashura as a day of celebration. But for us, it was a day of Aza. It was a day of calamity. It was a day of Masaib. The Ahlul Bayt, they relied on the Mu'mineen. And we have a religious duty to remember the Ahlul Bayt. We have a religious duty to remember Aba Abdullah. Because when we remember Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, we are upholding our values and principles. We are strengthening our iman when we remember Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. This is why millions are guided every year by the love of Aba Abdullah, by the message of Imam Al Hussein, by the ziyarah of Imam Al Hussein. People's lives transform as soon as they're connected with Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. This is why the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt insisted on their followers to visit the Ahlul Bayt, to visit Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. Going to Hajj. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حُجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ عَلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا If you're, if it's dangerous to go to Hajj, Hajj does not become wajib anymore. If you don't have money, Hajj is not wajib anymore. But the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, they encouraged their followers to visit Imam Al Hussein at all costs. Even while they were cutting off the hands and the legs, the, Imam, the Imams encouraged their followers. Why? Because it is through the remembrance of Imam Al Hussein the Hajj remains. It is through the remembrance of Imam Al Hussein the Salah and the Zakat and the Amr bil Ma'roof and the religion remain. Furthermore, my dear brothers and sisters, the Ziyarah tells us what was the purpose and the goal of Imam Al Hussein. Today there are some people, they know Imam Al Hussein is the grandson of the Prophet, but they don't know what was the goal, what was the mission of Imam Al Hussein. Today some people they say Hussein went for the sake of power. He went to take a position of power. But Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, his goal and his mission was for the sake of Allah. This is why in the ziyarah we say, Ashhadu annaka qad aqamta salat wa atayta zakat wa amarta bil ma'roof wa nahayta anil munkar. I bear witness that your mission was for the sake of salah, that your mission was for the sake of zakat, that your mission was for the sake of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Today, many Muslims don't know and they confuse what was the goal and the mission of Imam al Hussein. Some say Hussein went for the sake of power, for the sake of authority, and he got killed doing so. No. The Imams, they tell us this was the goal and the mission of Imam al Hussein, and this should be our goal, my dear brothers and sisters. If I am a true Husseini, if I am a true follower of Imam al Hussein, then my goal should be salah and zakat and amr bil ma'roof and nahi an al munkar. I can't just love Imam al Hussein and be from those who just cry for 10 days in Muharram and then that's it. There's no Imam Al Hussein in their life. There's no, no values and principles that Imam Al Hussein stood for. The ziyarah of Imam Al Hussein shows us that Imam Al Hussein had a goal, and we have to align ourselves with the goal of Imam Al Hussein. One of the greatest and perhaps the most encouraged ziyarah of Imam Al Hussein is ziyarat Ashura. The ziyarah that is recited on Ashura, visiting Imam Al Hussein on the day of Ashura. And by the way, this is a ziyarah that is not only recited on the day of Ashura. The Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, they encourage their followers to recite this at all times. At all times. It's just called ziyarat Ashura. But you recite it at all times. And today, from my experience, from the scholars that I have heard of, and I have heard their advice to the mu'mineen. They encourage the mu'mineen to recite Ziyarat Ashura. If you have a problem in your life, if you're going through a difficulty, they say recite Ziyarat Ashura for 40 days. And you will see that by the love and the honor of Imam Al-Hussein, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you what you're asking for. Imam al-Baqir, he narrates to us this ziyara, ziyara to Ashura. He asks his companion, he tells him, do you know who visits Imam al Hussein on Ashura? He tells him, the grave of Aba Abdullah has thousands of angels circling the grave, visiting Imam al Hussein on Ashura. And they do dua, they say, Ameen. For whoever visits Imam al Hussein, for whoever needs Imam al Hussein, for whoever loves Imam al Hussein and cries for Imam al Hussein. And then he tells his companion, the ziyara of Ashura is worth greater than 20,000 Hajj and 20,000 Umrah. Don't underestimate the ziyara of Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein, for the sake of the Hajj, he left Mecca. For the sake of preserving the sanctity of the Kaaba, because they had threatened to kill him, someone would have came and stabbed him and killed him while he's performing tawaf. But Imam al Hussein did not want the Kaaba, the sacred house, to be disrespected by Bani Umayyah. So he loved. Allah gave him his own shrine where the dua is answered beneath the dome of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Ziyarat Ashura, also there are several factors. This is passed on to us from Imam al-Baqir, it has several chains. Several very important points. One is that we have to acknowledge who Imam al Hussein is. Who is Imam al Hussein? We're not sitting and crying and remembering someone who was a nobody. We're crying for someone who was the very grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alayka ya Ibn Rasulullah. Assalamu alayka ya Ibn Amir al-Mu'mineen wa Ibn Sayyid al-Wasayyeen. Assalamu alayka ya Ibn Fatima Sayyidati Nisa al-Alameen. Assalamu alayka ya Thar Allah wa Ibn Tharah. One of the statements to talk about Imam al-Husayn He's referred to as Tharullah. You know, you have Thawar. Revolutionaries are called Thawar. What do revolutionaries stand for? They stand for their own rights. They revolt against an oppressive government. They revolt when their rights are taken away from them. But how many people will stand and revolt for the sake of God? Furthermore, the Ziyarah, Ziyarat Ashura, it helps us acknowledge the magnitude and the greatness of the day of Ashura and the tragedy of Imam al Hussein. Today, some people undermine what happened to Imam al Hussein. Some say, so what? People die all over the world. People are killed all the time. But Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam, his tragedy is greater. The Imam, alayhi salam, in the ziyarah, he says, Ya Aba Abdullah. لَقَدْ عَظُمَتِ الرَّزِيَّةِ The tragedy is very grave. The tragedy is very difficult. لَقَدْ عَظُمَتِ الرَّزِيَّةِ وَجَلَّتْ وَعَظُمَتِ الْمُصِيبَةُ بِكَ عَلَيْنَا وَعَلَى جَمِيعِ أَهْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ Your tragedy breaks our hearts. It breaks the heart of the ma'soom imam and the hearts of all Muslims. And then he says, وَعَظُمَتْ مُصِيبَتُكَ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ it's not only the people that cry for Imam al Hussein. You know who else cries for Imam al Hussein? The angels cried for Imam al Hussein. The angels shed tears for Imam al Hussein. Another very important point that makes Ziyarat Ashura unique from the other Ziyaras is that Ziyarat Ashura recognizes who the enemies of the Ahl al Bayt were. And this is what makes it a little bit different. And for some, it's controversial. Because some people, they say, we're going to love Imam al Hussein. We're going to cry for Imam al Hussein. But let's not mention the names of the enemies of the Ahl al Bayt. Let's not mention the names of those who participated in the murder and encouraged the murder of the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But the Quran tells us to disassociate ourselves from the enemies of God. The Qur'an teaches us 
to draw a line. I can't love God and love the enemies of God at the same time. I can't love Imam al Hussein and love the enemies of Imam al Hussein at the same time. I have to choose which camp I want to be on. Do I want to be on a night like this? Do I want to be on the camp of Abu Abdullah al Hussein? Or do I want to be on the camp of Umar bin Sa'd? I can't choose both. Today there are some Muslims, they say, let's choose both. Let's be at peace. Let's choose both. May Allah be satisfied with everyone. The Quran does not teach us this, my dear brothers and sisters. In fact, a part of our furu' al-deen is at-tawalli wa tabarri We need to disassociate ourselves from the enemies of God and the enemies of Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt. And this is what Ziyarat Ashura does. We say in the Ziyarah, Allahumma inna hadha yawmun tabarrakat bihi banu Umayyah. This is a day, the day of Ashura, that Bani Umayyah took as a day of Barakah. Today you see some people celebrate on the day of Ashura. They say Mubarak on the day of Ashura. They hold carnivals on the day of Ashura. Allahumma inna hadha yawmun tabarrakat bihi banu Umayyah. وَابْنُ آكِلَةِ الْأَكْبَادِ اللَّعِينِ بْنِ اللَّعِينِ عَلَى لِسَانِكَ وَلِسَانِ نَبِيِّكَ صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف فيه نبيك This is a day that Bani Umayyah took as a day of Eid and Yazid and those who are with Yazid they celebrated on this day So what should I do? Should I say, okay, you know what, let's be satisfied with them? Let's be okay with them, even though they committed the worst crime in history by killing the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa No. The ziyara teaches us to disassociate ourselves. And we have to every day decide whether we are with Imam al Hussein or we are with the enemies of Imam al Hussein. You can't be with both. Imam al Hussein draws the line. The day of Ashura draws the line. This is why in the ziyarah we say, إِنِّي سِلْمٌ لِمَنْ سَالَمَكُمْ وَحَرْبٌ لِمَنْ حَارَبَكُمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ I'm at peace with whoever is at peace with the Ahlul Bayt. And I'm an enemy of who is an enemy of the Ahlul Bayt. Today some people they say, no, 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 don't do la'an, don't say this and that. This is in the ziyarah. These are in the words of the Imam. And... The Qur'an uses la'an at least 30 times. The imams, they did la'an. We're not doing la'an over individuals who are good. And what is la'an? La'an is just asking Allah to remove His mercy from someone who, because of their actions, because of their crimes, they remove the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon themselves. So this is what the ziyarah does. Because Iman, my dear brothers and sisters, it's all about love and hate. Someone comes and asks Imam Sadiq, he tells him, how could Iman be about love and hate? He tells him, وَهَلِ iman إِلَّا الْحُبْ وَالْبُغْ That's all that Iman is. You love those who are with God, you love the good deeds, you love the good people, those who do good, and you disassociate yourself from those who are doing bad. This is what the Qur'an teaches us. This is what Rasulullah teaches us. Yes, we're not saying you go and you become violent with people. But in your heart, you have to disassociate yourself from the enemies of God and the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. Fourth, my dear brothers and sisters, Ziyarat Ashura. One thing unique about it is that Ziyarat Ashura gives us hope for a day that Imam al Hussein will be victorious. When we cry for Imam al Hussein, when we remember the Ahlul Bayt, we, this sometimes puts us in a state of depression and stress. Imam al Hussein was killed. What could we do? No, there's a lot that we could do. When you gather and you remember Imam al Hussein, you're strengthening your ties with the grandson of Imam al Hussein. Imam al Mahdi al Muntadar, who will seek vengeance for the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam al-Mahdi, he is the muntaqim. He is the one who will seek vengeance for the martyrdom of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. Because no one has sought vengeance for Imam al-Hussein. 
This is why in the ziyarah we say, وَأَسْأَلُهُ أَنْ يُبَلِّغَنِ الْمَقَامَ الْمَحْمُودَ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَأَنْ يَرْزُقَنِي طَلَبَ ثَارِي مَعَ إِمَامٍ هُدًا ظَاهِرٍ نَاطِقٍ بِالْحَقِّ مِنْكُمْ The only one who will seek true vengeance for Imam al Hussein and he will establish justice and fulfill the goals of Imam al Hussein is his grandson, Imam al Mahdi al Muntadar. Is... Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, Ziyarat Ashura, at the end of the Ziyarah, there's a sujood. There's a sujood, and in that sujood, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, Alhamdulillah. Why would anyone thank God? Why would anyone say Alhamdulillah for such a tragedy that Imam Al Hussein and his family went through? Yes, we thank God that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala made us from those who cry for Imam Al Hussein. We thank God that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala chose us amongst those who shed tears and remember Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam because it's a privilege that you have my dear brothers and sisters to be able to attend the majalis to be able to visit Imam Al Hussein to be able to shed tears for Imam Al Hussein because when you do that this brings peace and comfort to the heart of Fatima al Zahra and Rasulullah Allah chose you out of the billions of creation to be amongst those who cry for Imam Al Hussein and remember Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. This is why we say, Allahumma laka alhamd, hamd al shakirin laka ala musabihim. Alhamdulillah ala azim raziyati. The fact that you're crying, thank Allah for it. The fact that you're mourning Imam Al Hussein, show shukr to Allah, show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And then we say, Allahumma rzukni ziyarat shafa'at al Hussein yawm al wurud. Oh Allah, make me from those who receive the shafa'ah of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on the day of judgment.